Almighty God has honored the children of Adam. Allah doesn't say that he has honored only the Arabs or the Americans or a particular race, but Almighty God has honored all the children of Adam, irrespective of race, caste, color, creed, or sex. And there are many faiths, there are many religions who believe that the humankind has originated from a single pair. That is Adam and Eve, peace be upon them. But there are some faiths which say that it is because of the sin of the woman, that is Eve, may Allah be pleased with her, that the human beings are born in sin. And they put the blame only on the woman, that is Eve, for the downfall of the human beings. In fact, the Quran speaks about the story of Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, in several places. But in all the places, the blame is equally put on both of them, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them. And if you read Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 19 to 27, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, they are addressed more than a dozen of times. And the Quran says that both of them disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. Both of them repented and both were forgiven. Both are equally blamed for the mistake. There is not a single verse in the glorious Quran which puts the blame only on Eve. May Allah be pleased with her. But there is a verse in the glorious Quran in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 121, which says that Adam, peace be upon him, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you read the Quran, both are equally blamed for not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They both repented and they both were forgiven. And certain faiths, they say that because Eve disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is responsible for the sin of humankind, which Islam doesn't agree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed the woman and said that she will bear labor pains. That means pregnancy is a curse according to some people, which Islam doesn't agree at all. And the Qari recited the verse from the glorious Quran from Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number one, which says, respect the womb that bore you. In Islam, pregnancy does not degrade a woman, it uplifts a woman. And the Quran says in Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse number 14, that, O oh, humankind, we have enjoined on you to be good to your parents. In travail upon travail did your mother bore him, and in years to wane was his weaning. The Quran says in Surah Ahqaf, chapter 46, verse number 15, we have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to the parents. In pain did his mother bore him, and in pain did she give him birth. Pregnancy uplifts a woman, it does not degrade her. And in Islam, men and women are equal. And according to a hadith, which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, verse number eight, in the book of Adab, chapter number two, hadith number two, a person came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muhammad peace be upon him, and asked him that who is the person who deserves the maximum love and companionship in this world? And the Prophet said, your mother. The man asked, who next? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked, after that who? The Prophet repeated for the third time, your mother. The man asked, after that who? Then the Prophet said, your father. In short, 75%, three-fourth of the love and companionship of the children are due to the mother. 25%, one-fourth of the love and companionship goes to the father. In short, the mother gets the gold medal. She gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize. These are the teachings of Islam. In Islam, men and women are equal. But equality does not mean identicality. There are many misconceptions, especially when women are concerned in Islam. Many Muslims and non-Muslims, they have a misconception. Which can be removed if you understand the authentic sources 
Quran and the Sahih Hadith correctly. As I mentioned, men and women are overall equal. But equality does not mean identicality. Let me give you an example. That if in a class of students, two students, student A and B, they come out first and both acquire 80 marks out of 100. But if you analyze the answer sheet, there are 10 questions, each carrying 10 marks. In the first answer, student A gets 9 out of 10. Student B gets 7 out of 10. So in question 1, student A has a degree of advantage than student B. In question 2, student B gets 9 out of 10. And student A gets 7 out of 10. In question 2, student B has a degree of advantage than student A. In the remaining 8 questions, both get 8 out of 10. And if you total the marks of both the students, both get 80 out of 100. So if you analyze, both student A and B are overall equal. But in the answers to some questions, student A has a degree of advantage. In answers to some questions, student B has a degree of advantage. But overall, both are equal. Similarly in Islam, men and women are equal. Brotherhood in Islam does not only mean that the same sexes are equal. The universal brother in Islam means that besides race, caste, and creed, even the sex are overall equal. Men and women are equal in Islam. But in some aspects, the men have a degree of advantage. In some aspects, the women have a degree of advantage. But overall, both are equal. For example, if a robber enters my house, I will not say that I believe in women's rights, I believe in women's liberation, therefore my sister, my wife, my mother should go and fight the robber. Because Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 34 that Allah has given men more strength than the other. That men have more strength than the women. So where strength is concerned, the men have a degree of advantage. So since they have been given more strength, it's their duty to protect the women. Here, the men have a degree of advantage. Where love and companionship is concerned, where children should give to the parents, the women have a degree of advantage. As I mentioned earlier, the mother gets three times more respect and companionship than the father. Here, the women have a degree of advantage. But overall, if you analyze, men and women are equal in Islam. And for more details, you can refer to my video cassette. I had given the talk on women's rights in Islam, modernizing outdated. It's part one. That's the lecture. And part two, this is the question under session. These discuss the issue in great detail, and many misconceptions which are there in the minds of the human being have been removed here. And in this talk, I've divided the women's rights in Islam under six broad headings, spiritual rights, economic rights, social rights, legal rights, educational rights, and the political rights. And I've described there that overall men and women are equal. The concept of Almighty God in Islam, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not that Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the deity of a particular race or a particular group of people. But the Quran says in Surah Fatiha, chapter number one, verse number two, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, praise be to the Lord of the worlds. Almighty God is referred as Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. And in the last surah of the glorious Quran, that is Surah Nas, chapter 114, verse number one, it says, Ul Auz bi Rabbil Nas, that say, I seek refuge with the Lord of humankind. Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the Lord of the whole of humankind, not of a particular group of people or a particular race. And there are various verses in the glorious Quran which begin by saying, Ya ayyuhan nas, O humankind. Ya ayyuhan nas, O humankind. Ya ayyuhan nas, O humankind. And even the two verses I quote in the beginning of my talk, 
They began with Ya Ayyuhan Nas, O Humankind. And the glorious Quran also says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 168, Ya Ayyuhan Nas, O Humankind, eat of what is on the earth, good and lawful for you, and follow not the footstep of the devil, for he is to you an avowed enemy. Islam, in order for universe veil in the world, it has a moral code. It has a moral law. 